Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan 111, and welcome to a game called Knit Underground. I know very little about this game. Um, it's some kind of platformer with some puzzle and Metroidvania aspects and lots of secrets and exploration, so it sounded like it might be up my alley. Um, but I've only watched like a few minutes of gameplay and just played a couple of minutes in order to get the controls worked out. It's kind of an old game, it's almost a decade old. And so it's made with keyboard controls. We can climb walls. I've used Joy to Key to map it to a controller because that seemed more natural for me. But yeah, we've got a lot of platformy movement and climbing and jumping just kind of right out of the bat. Interesting. And yeah, I really am going in very blind, <laughs> so we'll see how it turns out. Um, it's kind of, I think it, this author has made some other games that were pretty weird. Which way do I want to go? Let's try going this way because it looks more difficult. Wait a minute, this is where I started. I just realized this is the same room I started in, so we just went in a circle. Okay. Oh! Knit Underground! Okay. There's the title. Um... Yeah, um... What's the name of it? Ernog Unlimited, I think is also another indie game by the same author. Uh, which is an interesting game that I've watched some people play. Oh wow! Chapter 2, Chapter 3, more stuff, Chapter 1. Alright, we'll do things in order. So we'll head into Chapter 1. My also vague understanding is Chapters 1 and 2 kind of like tutorialize the game, and then Chapter 3 is just kind of like big open world exploration to just like go try to find secrets and do what you want. <laughs> um, it's also like the, the art style and... Uh, the look and sound of it or whatever it's kind of i don't know atmospheric is maybe not exactly the right word so uh play so is this this button yes so i map that on my controller oh we're like no longer in the dark and we're a little person with a face now and i went in the house and in the house there was nothing i have a power button it just does that. And I have another button, or two or three. Oh! That's my inventory, I think. Silver coin. Many sprites rely on human money to do business. This is not without problems, as there is no general agreement about the exact values of various coins. Interesting. I think this is supposed to be set in, like, some post-apocalypse world or whatever, where there's, like, different races on the planet or something? I don't know. I read some of the description on Steam, I think. But I don't really remember it. <laughs> we'll discover. I think there is a bit of lore. I'm not sure how good or interesting the writing's gonna be. Okay, there's a person. And so if I interact with you... Nicholas! Uh, hi there! Welcome to Knit Underground. In this game, you play as a girl who has lost all her memories. Uh, no? Me is the main character's name, apparently, which makes sense. It's not you, it's me. You have no idea who you are or how you ended up here. Don't listen to him. He's such a liar. Anyway, my name is me, Sprocket. Right now, I need to see the fairies, so we should totally go to them. Mind if we say hi to my sister first, though? She lives up the top path. And this thing just got out of the way for me. This person turns to face me. Alright. Go see your sister on the top path. That looks like it's going to electrocute me if I jump in. Let's find out. It did indeed. And now we have some music kicking in. Um... I think this music is going to be too loud, so let's go ahead and adjust the audio balance. 
a little bit. I think that's going to be better, and I think also while we're here, let's turn down some of the water noise as well. Something like that might be good. Okay. So, oh, A. Uh, A is this one? No, this one? Oh, wow, I turned into a ball for a minute that could fly. Okay, so I have a button that's called power. Normally it just does this, but when I get energized with this, then all of a sudden I can turn into, oh, do I fly? Not exactly. I'm kind of like, it's almost like Comet Form in Rogue Legacy. Okay. Hey sis, Ray, Ree, Ray? We'll call you Ray. Look what I found. A rare human artifact. It automatically creates maps over places. Amazing, isn't it? I want you to have it. I know, I'm the best. You're welcome. You need it more than me anyway. I'm not the one who goes spelunking all the time. I have told you're going to the Fairy Springs. Ask for a name change? For me. What kind of name is Ray? See you around. Oh, Ray, like do Ray me perhaps? Uh, spacebar. I think I have mapped this. Yes. If I hold it down, it shows me a map. And so I guess the little highlighted thing at the top is where I currently am. Uh, how am I going to get out of here without becoming dead? Uh, this guy's no longer electrocuting. Nope, now he is. Um, okay. So what do I do? How about I go here and then jump. Nope, that's not gonna work. Can I walk through the house? I can walk through the house. It's just that easy. I solved the puzzle. Okay, so here's our map and it kind of shows me that I could go left or down. And yeah, like the map just starts filling itself in as I go to different screens. All right, great. I don't know what these white things are, and I also don't know that I have the ability to climb up here just yet. So I think those will remain a mystery for the moment. And instead, I'm going to keep going to the left for no particular reason. I see an arrow pointing up and left over here, so I'll try to follow it. What do we have here? An interact point. Game saved. Oh! Uh, there are save games. All right, and they are marked with an S on the map. Okay, so I found a save game here in chapter one. And I'm supposed to find like a rename fairy and let's fall down in this hole and see where it takes us. Uh, into another big hole. All right, whee! Okay, that's fine. Uh, here's another power thingy. And so if I press the power button, it shoots. Can I bring this between screens? Yes, so I could bring this with me and then shoot something else at some point. Can I aim my shot? It seems like I can only aim it to the left or to the right. So I was pressing like up and it still just fired to the left. All right, and I just get one. So it seems like the power is like a temporary inventory slot basically. All right, I shot the electrocution robot or whatever he is. And as a result, I've gained access. Look at all this traveling I've done, it's amazing. So this kind of weird totem thing we saw earlier and it disappeared when I went to visit my sister. And I can walk on it. Can't seem to interact with it otherwise. There's an arrow over here pointing to the left. And is this another save game? It is indeed. All right. So I presume this will either kill me or something. This seems like the type of uh, puzzle platformer where it's like you're expected to take deaths and it resets on the beginning of the screen very quickly. Um, kind of like Celeste or Offspring Fling or various games like that. So I'm going to be very happy to take deaths if they give me 
information and learning about what I'm doing. Um, it seems like up is one of the most difficult directions to go, so I choose to try to go that way because I feel like if there's like good secrets or treasure or something, they'll probably be in this direction. Oh, I have to climb up, right. Um, look at these crazy guys. So they shoot some kind of thingy medus that can travel through walls, but travel th slowly through walls. Kind of interesting mechanic. And so if I do this and this, then I can get past all that stuff, it seems. And get over here to the left. And once again, it seems like if it was difficult to get there, then maybe this will lead me somewhere good. Maybe. I don't know. We're just exploring. All right. Uh, what is that? Left, right? Something plus one? Did it increase my movement speed, possibly? Is it telling me to hit a button? I'm pressing both left and right at the same time on the keyboard, in case that was anything, but that doesn't appear to be anything. Oh, I did get something in my inventory. Candlestick. Legend has it that candles placed in these candlesticks will never melt. Have experiments suggest otherwise. So maybe the left-right thing was uh, something about my inventory and telling me to like press the inventory key or something? I'm not sure. So maybe there were going to be dark areas, but I got... Well, I got a candlestick. I didn't get an actual candle to go in it. So I'm not sure if I would be able to light up a dark area yet. Also, is there... It looks like there might be a hole in the ceiling here. Uh, let's... Oops. The fact that we can just climb right off the bat does give us a lot of mobility, and also we're good at bouncing off of walls. Don't think I can get up there, though. So, if I... Oh, uh, I'm kind of trapped down here. That's not good. So I guess I have to kind of go back out the way I came in. I guess I can do this and just race it back out. Sure. Uh, let's try going down to the bottom over here. Um, I'm going to work my way to the left-hand side of the map for no good reason. All right, I don't think I have a way to traverse this upwards right now, so I guess we'll go this way. And I've been mostly kind of ignoring, I don't know if you call it like art in the background. I wonder if I'm going to need to like pay attention to that at some point. So what does this power do? I see, it's like explosion jump. I probably need to use that over here. Um... Oh, I think it wore off after a time when I didn't use it. Let's actually watch this. So if I just hold on to this for a number of seconds and don't press the button, it does go away. Okay, so finite time duration. Perhaps that was true of the other thing as well. Oops. So I guess I use it here to get here, but then it still didn't get me high enough there, so maybe I need to do it better. Uh, maybe I can go straight up to the blue one. Yeah. All right, and the blue one, what does it do? It shoots me. It's like a shooty gun with teleport option. And I see another candlestick. I think I found everything in the temple. Let's head back out. Interesting. So I got two candlesticks. And apparently this area that I'm in is called the temple. And apparently my character, who, despite in-game having no memory of anything, uh, according to the other guy, actually knows a whole lot more than I do about what's going on and knows we should get out of here. So I will take that with not a grain of salt. 
Okay, so I guess this area was the temple, and if I press my buttons correctly, we can get out of it. I wonder if there is a way to carry the uh, red blasty thing all the way up there to get up there. But I will choose not to worry about that right now. And instead, do my best to exit the temple if such a thing is possible. So remind me on my map. Yeah, I guess I did come in from the top. And I can climb back out from the top. All right. I didn't notice if this whole area that has kind of the temple brick background had like its own music. So when I exit here, here's the game save. So yeah, we'll do that again, sure. Does the music change when I exit the temple? It does. All right, so I'm in a different space. A different space, also a different place. Also, hello. Johan. Johan's a name. You can talk to me. You know, there's a thing called speaking. So you don't even have the decency to talk to me, yet you expect me to open this door for you? Oh, those things are doors? Fine, I was even going to let you through for free, but now you can forget about that. Two candlesticks I want. You can find them in the temple. Bring them to me and I may reconsider. What's that? You brought them already? I guess I should let you through after all. Okay, so apparently we happen to right order that stuff. And what happens if I interact here? The door's already open. Stop standing around here, weirdo. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, there's little buggy things here. Or are they snakes? What are they? What are you? Ikatere. Hi, me. I see you've met Johan. First he builds a stupid door, then he offers to open it for people, for a fee. Can you believe the moron asked me to fetch him candlesticks? Most people have the respect to not even touch things that belong in the temple. Johan asked me to steal them. I put some ancient Tangaroa curse on him. Then I gave him the glare. Works on everybody. How'd you sneak through? I had candlesticks. They are no longer in my inventory. Uh, or rather, my inventory knows about them, but I no longer have two of them, now I have zero of them. Alright. And if I talk to you from here, say hi to Maduri for me. Alright. Some weird names. Some weird folks. I think the game is weird. Okay, so this is interesting, like, I didn't realize that this wasn't like a wall. It may or may not be visible, or I might just have to infer it from context. I think it might be visible, but it's hard to see in any case. So I have to look around for kind of obscured ceilings. Yeah, that can bring me places. It looks like there is a button here. And if I stand on it, it causes this door to behave like that. Where am I in the map? Interesting. There is like a little narrow gap kind of connecting these rooms, almost as though it were like a secret. Um, sure. So I was on the other side of this room before, I believe. Maybe? No, I think I was in the room above it and it looked like this room, maybe? Um, in any case, that seems to be wrapping back around somewhere I've been mostly. I do note that there are a couple empty rooms to the left. Is there any way that I can go to the left anywhere here? It doesn't look like I can go to the left here. What about down here? Not so far as I can tell. I think, and I'm not sure if it's in chapter one or just in chapter three, that like there's like a giant map that's like a million squares, well, a million over a thousand squares big, but like all the squares in the map are filled. And so you like want to look for secrets or something. This is all just like based on a little bit that I read in like Steam descriptions and things. Um, all right, who is this person? Midori, me. Please don't tell me you're heading out again. You always make me worry. Tried to raise you, your sisters and brothers, to play music. You go on expeditions to I don't know where or why. 
It's what I get for marrying a sprocket. They say it's in your blood to put yourself in danger. Less than a year until one of you is selected to ring the bells of fate. So yeah, I think in chapter three, that's the goal. There's like six bells or something you're supposed to find and ring. I'm afraid they'll select you and not your brother. If you're wounded deep in the tunnel, you can't even cry out for help. If you're chosen, you're not entitled to reject. Look about that. So am I mute when she says I can't cry out for help? Obviously, I wasn't talking to the uh, toll door candlestick guy, whose name I've apparently already forgotten. Have you talked to Ray? She wanted to give you something. Yes. I did, and she did. She gave me the map. Yes, I remember now. But I also appreciate the fact that in-game more people are telling me that I should go find things in order to get things, as it were. Um, I like the look of this flower thing here. I like the colors. Um, let's fall down. It's another person. Susanna. What's with that outfit? You used to dress so elegantly. Do I know her? Also, sorry for bringing this up, but I'm having financial problems. Maybe she's confusing me with my sister. Do you remember that small debt you owe me? <laughs> You're usually more talkative than this. Anyway, would now be a good time to repay? Accept quest? Interesting. So there's a quest to repay. I'm gonna say yes. Actually, let's say no first, because I'll probably get a chance to do it again. I shouldn't pay off my sister's debt. And then if I do it again, what are you planning to pay off your debt? Accept quest? Okay, this time I'm going to say yes. I'll help her out. Space. Space is... Uh, that's my inventory key. That's my map, which is space, and there is a Q here, and there's also a glowing eye or two which presumably is stuff related to the quest, and so maybe there's two different places where I pick up currency and then I bring them back to her? Maybe. So, yeah, let's try going left-left and see what I find. Um, I'm not sure why things got ominous when I went in the water. I wonder if my map artifact also shows paths opened by earthquakes. Oh, it was an earthquake! Of course! Of course it was. And I see the little two dots kind of hanging in the middle of my map that I guess is supposed to tell me something something. And I see the thing up there. So how would I get to there? It looks like I would have to platform all the way from here. So if I take the top route, and it looks like I could get to looked like some kind of green gem. Which presumably one might use to pay off a debt. Or at least part of one. So if I check my inventory, I now have green gemstone, a beautiful and highly valuable gemstone. Great. And according to my map, uh, farther below seems to be the way to go. I see, it looks like I could have climbed from over here as well. And yeah, let's try going down and then left. And then downward is maybe somewhere that got opened by the recent earthquake. And so perhaps if I had visited this screen before just now, uh, I wouldn't have seen this little hole crack thing that goes downwards now. Maybe. I'm kind of extrapolating based on how video games work and what I've seen so far. Okay, it looks like there is a green switch up in here which presumably will open the green doors. It has changed the green doors, and there's a timer. Interesting. And the longer I stand on it, the more time the bottom parts are going to stay open and the left part is going to stay shut, I think. Once again, video games. I have played some before. So let's imagine I want to go down here. Yeah, because I'm trying to get to the other eye thingy, I think. Okay, um, how am I going to get past this robot who presumably is going to shoot at me? Oh, he doesn't shoot, he jumps. Alright, uh, what does the green button do? Is 
Seems like it just does the same stuff as before. Could I just outrun the robot? Maybe. Uh, it appears I can. There, maybe those types of robots are proximity activated, perhaps? And let's see. Green gem should be down and to the left. And how close can I get to this robot? Like, he'll have line of sight on me here, and he's already coming towards me. And then when he doesn't have line of sight, he stops. Oh, could he have pressed the button for me? It didn't look like he was pressing the button for me. So I think I need to run in here, hold down the button for... Hmm. Actually, no, if I'm trying to get downward, hold on. I can just go around all this mess, right? Maybe? Maybe not. Just trying to see if I could go across the top. So, all right. Well, how am I going to get around second robot? I guess if I just outrun him, we'll be fine. Okay, so let's try this. I think that's as long as I can hold it. Oh, he jumped super fast. I will try that again and try... If I just hold to the left, I can't outrun him. Okay, so we'll take the death. Um, I wasn't holding left the entire time previously. So this time we'll hold down the button for like three ticks and then... Okay, then we'll go over here and press to the left and hold to the left and jump up here and get to our goal. Which, I guess we just use that on the way back. And so over here, let's imagine I can just outrun this guy. Sure, great. And this is the screen with the eye. And sure enough, there appears to be a green gem here. I don't know how much Ray owes that girl, but I'm sure these two gemstones are sufficient. <laughs> All right, so once again, our character who has amnesia also is omniscient about everything going on in the game and can direct us uh, about what we need to do. Okay, so I feel like I'm accomplishing things. All right, that's long enough to hold that door open. And now I can just go past around these guys by going this way. And the queue. Uh, the queue has like a little eye to the side of it, so maybe it's telling me Q is quest and I is... I've done it. <laughs> I don't know that I need to hold those down for any reason. Oh, do they travel across screens? Hold on. Uh, hold on. So I want to go down here. And then I want to charge this up for like... Let me just charge it up all the way, why not? And then if I go onto the next screen, yes, it's still ticking down. So, green ticky button thingies uh, hold their state across multiple screens. All right, we're learning all kinds of things about this video game. It feels like both be, it's being an open world game and also steering me at the same time, which is usually a pretty good effect. So let's go accomplish our first quest by paying off Ray's debts to... what was your name? Susanna. Are you offering me these gems? You're crazy. That's like what you owe me times 20. I have no idea how to properly thank you for this. You can open the door. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, there's an arrow pointing to the right. Thank you so much for those gemstones. So I think I'm going to go to the right, even though we just unlocked a door that would go downward. But let me try to remember where that is on the map. Oh, do the arrows point at saves? I had not paid attention to that, but based on how other games uh, that have, like, screen metroidvanias often do stuff like that, like Environmental Station Alpha, one screen away from a save, there would be a little arrow pointing at the save, for example. Um, but yeah, I feel like these episodes could be a little bit longer, but since we've just reached a save and it's been about a half an hour, 
Um, I feel like that's probably a good first episode length. So, yeah, still not sure exactly what to think of this game, but seems like it could be possibly interesting, so I'm going to say I hope, as always, that you all are having a great day, and I will see you again soon for more Knit Underground. For now, bye-bye.